Migrate, initiated by International Refugee Rights Association. This is Gizemdik, and today we will host Noura to talk about the conditions of women in refugee camps in Syria. As it is widely known, people escaping from death and prison do not always have the chance of living in another country under equal conditions. Many of them are forced to live in certain places called refugee camps to survive. Before moving to the conversation, let us introduce Noura beforehand. Her profession is engineering and now she is interested in humanitarian help. She worked in Idlib with a Turkish NGO. She worked in Idlib's suburban areas such as Atmas camps. And that is where she witnessed the conditions of refugee camps. Hello, Nora. Welcome. Hello, Ms. Gizem. Thank you for hosting me. My first question will be that, under what kind of conditions do refugee women live in Idlib? Actually, women in Idlib live under very harsh humanitarian and social living conditions due to the war situation in Syria. Simply, we can say that women, men and children lack of the most necessary needs of life in Idlib. There is no health, educational or even psychological care in those camps. There are no buildings, no draining system or even planned streets. Only swaths of land filled with the tents and worn out pieces of cloth that shelter pieces of meat, waiting for a miracle from heaven to rescue them after 10 years of war that destroyed their strength and mental and psychological health. Then let's talk about the reasons that force women to live in a refugee camp. Quite simply, a group of, a group of people in Syria is stuck with no options in the camps because they migrated from their homes after the Assad regime attacked their areas and arrested their men, killed their children and stole their homes. And they could not defend themselves because they were defenseless without weapons in the face of an armed army supported by foreign countries. Of course, very few people managed to escape outside of the country who had money and some of them collaborated with the Assad regime and worked with him, but the vast majority, majority were forbidden to leave the borders because, because of the huge, scary numbers of asylum seekers, and they were stuck in the plastic camps without walls that repel any heat and cold from outside. Can you talk about the daily life of women in refugee camps? How does the routine work? There are days in the camps could not be any worse than this. They wake every early morning to take care of their children and the sick and the elderly people. After cleaning, arranging and removing the shades that closes the tent to sleep, the women set out on a journey in search of something to eat. Uh, there are some humanitarian organizations coming from the neighboring uh, countries such as Turkey and Jordan. Uh, provide some basics such as bread, but securing healthy and useful food remains an almost impossible task. What are the basic needs that refugee women cannot reach? In the first place, there's the medical care, especially for mothers during pregnancy and childbirth. There are no clinics, hospitals, or even clean environments. Rather, they rely on uh, primitive home medicine, herbs, myths, and ancient legends because of their ignorance in the field of medicine. Uh, secondly, there is no proper sanitation for the tent. Sewage is everywhere, there is no, uh, there, and this ex exposes the children to in intractable and deadly germs, not to mention the smell and general shameful appearance for the tents. What effect do social roles such as being a mother or wife have on the lives of refugee women in the camps? There is no social life in the camps because uh, as an entire family of father, mother and children, they are prob probably living in one tent and most of the time there is more than one family in the same tent 
that is women cannot have friends with other women or the wife cannot be cannot live the proper life of a wife in the in a comfortable way or even have some privacy to have some, some moment of sadness or even happiness are the situations such as harassment and bullying common how do women protect themselves in such cases is there a complaint authority i'm telling you about it this place that just like in jungle there are of course no authorities to organize and make laws but due to the crowding and the kinship between the individuals and the tribe fanatism among arabs uh, cases of rape harassment and bullying are rare because such a situation may lead to a certain killing of the aggressor by the residents of the village of the or the camp i want to ask that Everyone in the refugee camp waits for the day when they will lead a normal life. How does this type of expectation manifest in women's life? There is almost no hope for these families to return to their previous normal life without the fall of the Assad regime and its place and its pre- replacement by a new regime or the neighboring countries to fully embrace these families until that time women still and remain the most affected element by the surrounding events first of all because uh, they are the most sensitive elements in the society maybe a child can get used to it and adapts faster than others and the man can go out and work and distract himself but the woman remains locked up in her tent meditating sighing and thinking about the future and she may sometimes help help in difficult tasks such such as picking olives and collecting plastics to help her family provide a living so the woman is the element most under pressure in this nomadic life and the disorder of herself and her personality would affect the child and consequently an entire generation thank you nora dear listeners this is gizamdik and nora and we have talked about the conditions of women in refugee camps in syria We discussed the main problems, lack of basic needs, and effects of social roles upon daily life in a refugee camp. Thanks for listening. See you next time in Roads to Migrate.